This video is the tragic tale of Vilja Erika Taki and the treatment of her by her father Tuko Taki and his girlfriend Serpa Lamanen. Just so you know, for the purposes of this video, I'll refer to the little girl as Erika, as her father as father, the girlfriend as girlfriend, and her mother as just a mother. This crime took place in Helsinki in Finland. A lot of the research I did was in Finnish, so if I do get some information incorrect, please forgive me. If you do end up liking this video, please subscribe. If you do want to help support the channel, donation links are in the description. And finally, if you would like to talk to me directly, please join my Discord server. Links are in the description. So we start in 2004 when Erica is born. Now, shortly after her birth, her parents get divorced um, and Erica stays with her mother. In 2010, for whatever reason, the mother is no longer able to care for Erica. Uh, by this time, Erica was six years old. So through legal means, through social services, etc., the mother leaves Erica in the custody of her father and her father's girlfriend. So Erica moves in to her father's house uh, where her, his new girlfriend lives. And social services went to the house to you know, ensure that it is secure enough to house a six-year-old. And the father did tell social services he will get a bigger apartment. But nonetheless, social services approved the transition from uh, Erica going from her mother to her father. Unfortunately for Erica, in her new home, she experienced constant domestic violence. And it is the relationship between Erica and the new girlfriend of her father, which is the cent central theme of this video i think this crime took place because of hate but i'll come on to that later the girlfriend would force feed erica she would beat erica and she would force erica to run outside see when you force feed the kid the kid gains weight so a way to counteract that the girlfriend would tell erica go run outside go run outside for ages like you're talking hours and this was also observed by the neighbors now the question is why would the girlfriend do this? And if you ask me, it's because she just did not want to look after Erica and didn't want that inconvenience. That's it. She's not in the house. She's outside in the garden. She's running around. I can watch TV, read my magazines, whatever they may be. Now, when the police questioned the, the father and the girlfriend, the girlfriend told police that Erica would smash things around the house and would start cutting her own clothes like when children are around the house they're gonna drop things you know accidentally um but later it emerged that these stories that she was telling the police uh she as uh, she did it all herself and then blamed young erica for it now as i mentioned neighbors would observe erica outside and they began to see bruises on her face so they contacted uh social services and at this point the mother of Erica also began to see Erica with bruises and, and gaining weight and not looking herself. Now, social services did get in contact with the father and they did observe Erica, but they felt Erica was okay at the time, even though during her death in the autopsy, there were 89 signs of assault, which is uh, astonishing. So in late 2011, uh, the mother filed a lawsuit in the Helsinki District Court for custody of her daughter so the mother saw the daughter and she was like she's getting tortured there's something wrong here i want to take her back because she obviously signed her over so she can't just go and take her right the father i'm guessing the mother said to the father hey fix up you're hurting our daughter and the father must have said yeah i am i'm doing my best to which she said all right forget this i'm going to the district court but when she went to the court case when she went to court the father opposed the mother's claim for custody and wider visitation rights and to be fair even though i understand her acting in this manner legally speaking she couldn't do anything because she already signed her daughter over because of this the district court ordered the girl to stay with her father now in november 2011 the father contacted the authorities and told them there's something wrong with erica she has huge behavioral disorders she's not acting like a normal child so the local authorities had erica see a psychiatrist but the psychiatrist suggested that the best treatment is for her to be placed in a family support center um, and it was confirmed that there were no signs of behavioral problems my guess is that the father did this to get rid of the door the father thought okay well i'm not going to give it to the wife 
because that's going to give her satisfaction. You know, they probably have some beef going on. Um, so the best way for me to get rid of my daughter is through some kind of legal, legal means through social services. So let me make a fake story uh, where, you know, they'll take it away. But it turns out when they analyzed her behavior further, she was completely fine in terms of her own behavior. So they did keep her for a couple of months, uh, the child services agencies, but they realized that Erica is fine in terms of, like, she, she doesn't have any mental disorders, she doesn't have any eating disorders, so they sent her back to her father. Unfortunately, Erica did object to this. The girlfriend objected to this. And after she came home, Erica started to show injuries again on her face, on her wrists, and on her legs. And when she went to school, on several occasions, the school did contact child services to tell them, you need to look at this again. So in terms of Erica's death, uh, in the spring of 2012, the violence towards her escalated. So social services give the child back to the father. The night before Mother's Day in 2012, it was reported that Erica was allegedly breaking more stuff, you know, as the girlfriend claimed. So the father and the girlfriend tied Erica's hands with tape and cable ties. Now, the father did claim when he told the police that his girlfriend worked with orphans and in an orphanage earlier in her life so she knows how best to discipline you know young children this is where the idea of tape and cable ties comes from and if you ask me i don't know what kind of orphanage that is but that is illegal um so they wrap her up in a sheet and they put her on a sofa bed now because of the girl because erica is in a tight space now she's wrapped up her hands are tied she kept moving right because she's just she's trying to breathe she's trying to you know, be comfortable if you like, or she's trying to escape. So her father's girlfriend hit her in her stomach um, and then she got an electrical cord and tied up her feet. They then covered Erica's face with more of the sheet they had around her body and they put packaging tape on her mouth and nose. And according to forensic examination, Erica eventually died of suffocation and she, which, you know, she, she was there for about 46 hours to which she could no longer breathe. Now, the father and the girlfriend said the purpose of the procedure was to calm the child down. The father said he didn't think that doing this would lead to her suffocation. And during the interrogations, the girlfriend said that she thought because uh, they left the top of the head open from the sheet, right, that air could go through. So the trial took place on the 30th of August 2012 in the Helsinki District Court where the father and his girlfriend were charged with assault um, and the, the, the Finnish call it deprivation of liberty and murder. Now, the defendants did admit to causing the girl's death, but they denied murder. So essentially, the father and the girlfriend told the court, yes, we did tie her up and yes, we did put the sheet around her and tie her hands, etc. But our intention was just to calm her down, just to keep her just to tame her we didn't murder her purposely now the court did order a psychiatric evaluation of both mother and the girlfriend and they were found sane and eventually they were found on the 19th of march 2013 they were found guilty and sentenced to life imprisonment in accordance with the prosecutor's demands and according to the law and you know uh, what the judge's thinking was is that they should have realized that blocking a child's airway i.e the sheet they put around the face is quite likely to lead to suffocation. The practice was exceptional and caused great physical and mental suffering to the victim and the act as a whole was outrageous, the judge said. The defendants did appeal the case but both appeals were rejected and the life sentences of the court um, and the appeal remained permanent. In terms of the government authorities like the social services, workers etc, 11 of them were actually charged with this crime. The charges related to the handling of Erica's affairs. It was claimed that the child situation had not been addressed in time. The prosecutor said we had plenty of resources, so lack of resources wasn't an issue. In fact, it is said that Helsinki has the best resources in the whole country to deal with this kind of issue. And the trial for this began in February 2015. The criminal proceedings lasted for around five weeks, and on the 30th of March 2015, uh, the district court held two social workers guilty of negligent violation of official duty. So they imposed a 25-day fine on the supervisor of the social worker in charge of Erica's affairs. Uh, the social worker was not sentenced to any jail time. 
and the charges of the other defendants were completely dismissed. So essentially they blamed the person at the top. So now I'm going to give you my thoughts in conclusion and I'm going to come back to hate. I think if you look at uh, the girlfriend, right? I think the girlfriend looked at Erica and she saw Erica's mother, the ex-wife of the father, right? So in her head, she doesn't view the mother as just a mother. She views the mother as the ex-wife. She could go back to him. She may go back to him. He may go back to her. He may have shown signs that maybe he still liked her or loved her. Or maybe he didn't. Maybe this is all in her head. But I think every single time the girlfriend looked at Erica, she saw the mother. She also didn't want to take care of the child. So it seems to me, right, the father, he's single. The girlfriend, she's single. They meet. They're having a good time as a couple. Yeah? Time goes along. It turns out now the father has to take care of the daughter. The girlfriend didn't want anything to do with that. At that moment, she either had to walk away or she to, she either had to accept, okay, well, I love him, so I love her, right? As in Erica. She had to take Erica on as her responsibility. There's nothing wrong with her walking away at that time if she feels taking care of Erica is too big of a burden. That is understandable. But for her to then torture Erica by force feeding her and beating her, right? For her to tie her up, put uh, cables around her legs. I mean, that is just, just it, it's unfathomable to me that human beings, particularly adults, so-called adults, can treat young children this way. I don't know of her history, the girlfriend that is. I don't know if she has any history of trauma, if she had uh, an okay upbringing or not. It doesn't actually matter, okay? There is no justification in what she did. So I'm trying to think to myself when she said to, when she told the police that Erica would throw things on the floor and that Erica would rip her own clothes. Now, I don't think that accusation in itself is too outlandish. I mean, if you think about it, children do do weird things, right? Children are going to throw stuff on the floor, even if they are six or eight years old. Children may end up tearing their clothes accidentally, okay? I think... If this was true, if this was true, and let's, let's accept the idea that it was true to begin with. If it was true, then I think every single time Erica did something like this, the girlfriend would get more annoyed than what she normally would, simply because it was Erica. If Erica was her own daughter, I don't think she would have acted in the same way, because when she looked at her daughter, she wouldn't see Erica's mother, she would see herself. You understand... Uh, the thinking now right like this is where I say the hate comes from I think maybe she was jealous of the mother I don't know uh, I mean I guess she would never have wanted the mother around right who wants their current partner's ex around it makes no sense um, and she was just too lazy too immature too weak and too just completely brain dead if you ask me, to handle this situation. As I said, she should have walked away and told her boyfriend, this isn't for me. As to the father, the issues with the father, probably bigger than the girlfriend. Because as a father, you have a connection to your child, right? And they say, uh, mama's boy and, and daddy's girl, right? As in, the, the, the sons always end up being closer to the mother, and the daughters always end up being closer to the father. That's obviously a social construct, right? But that's generally the thinking of how childs behave. So my guess would be that the father would have or should have had a really, really deep connection to her daughter, right? So let's assume father's at home. Let's just say he's on his laptop doing work. I don't know, whatever he's doing. And then he sees the girlfriend slap Erica or beat Erica or whatever it may be. He must have felt it. Oh, I'm guessing he would have felt it. But he did nothing. In fact, he even took part in this. So it seems to me the time Erica had away from him when she was born to the age of six, he got over her and he didn't care for her anymore. And he probably did take her custody when she turned six um, out of guilt or he probably thought, this is my burden, I have to take care of it. But it does not seem like this is something he would have wanted. I also think the father had the responsibility to tell the girlfriend to get lost. It's one thing for me to say, 
the girlfriend should have left. It's another thing where the father should have said, I've seen the way you behave around children. That's ch- If that's what you can do to children, what are you going to do to me? Who am I in this situation? Right? So you get lost. See you later. But again, he was too weak and probably too stupid to make that decision. Now, I couldn't find out why the mother uh, gave Erica to the father in the first place, right? When she was age six. But I do think the mother should take some responsibility too. Not in essentially the torture. Maybe maybe uh, to give her the benefit of the doubt, maybe she had like a really severe medical problem where she couldn't take care of the child anymore because she did, she did in 2011, she did try and take custody back, right? So at least she had the foresight to think, well, I can't look after the child for whatever reason, but the daddy certainly can't. So whatever my reasons are, they're not important anymore. The sanctity of my child is important. Uh, I want to legally take her back, right? So whether it happened or not, the point is, at least her intention were there. So may Erica rest in peace. I think it's sickening from the father and the girlfriend to torture her the way they did. Um, in fact, maybe the girlfriend just had uh, confidence issues, right? Maybe the girlfriend was suffering from some kind of um, little man complex where everything she did or every annoyance or every every reason as to why she hated her life, she took it out on a child. Instead of facing whatever issues she had, instead of actually manning up, so to speak, it's just a metaphorical term, but instead of actually standing up and fixing her problems, whatever they were, she decided to lay them all onto Erica. And I think I speak for me and I speak for you when I say, I hope they rot in jail. I hope they never get released. And there's never, ever, ever going to be a time where, like if, if, if in 10 years time I look at this story and I read a report hypothetically where the father and the girlfriend are fully remorseful. Sorry, mate, your remorse does nothing. Your remorse does nothing for the mother, right? It does nothing for you. And it certainly does nothing to Erica. Imagine going through all of this just to be remorseful. huh? Where were your remorses or your emotions or your forgiveness or your or your 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 apologies when you were tying her up, huh? Anyway, thank you for listening.